Hello and welcome to Wednesdays with W. This is episode number 22. We got a guest uh, here on this show who was uh, very stylish, graceful, out in the middle. And uh, he also had to deal with a lot in life as well of it. Nonetheless, he's played in excess of 60 test matches. He's proved to be a high quality player. And uh, it's none other than uh, Murli Vijay. Of course, uh, Vijay is his name. Murli is his father's name. This is something that he spent a lot of time in trying to emphasize with people. It's my pleasure to present you Murli Vijay, who we not heard of uh, late, but of course, knowing him, uh, he'll always bring a surprise or two. Thanks for uh, readily accepting to join on the show, Vijay. Welcome to you. Thank you so much, sir, for having me here in the show. Beautiful opportunity for me to connect with you in this platform. Thank you, sir. Again. It's been interesting uh, watching your life go by. It's been eventful. It is something uh, that you did on your own or it was just a case of life dealing you with uh, some indifferent cards? Uh, it, was, uh, it was a conscious effort towards uh, understanding. Uh, I, I had passion in the sport cricket. So that has got me to where I am at the moment. So I'm really grateful and honored. Uh, and I'm a proud individual sitting in front of you, sir. Of course you are. I know you are very proud of whatever you've done, whatever it is that you are capable of doing. Uh, the reason I say whatever it is you are capable of doing is because you are taken to golf seriously. We'll get to that later. <laughs> yes, but uh, for those who do not know you well, you are uh, seen as somebody who is rebellious. Any merit in that view? So I have my point of view, but I don't know how to, you know, I'm still learning to express through language. But I definitely have a point of view uh, and, uh, and the point of view is to be happy, basically to spread happiness and, uh, you know, enjoy basically life with people around and be uh, some kind of contribution to them. So these are the thoughts run in my head when I wake up in the morning, just want to enjoy my day, um, contribute to somebody next to me or maybe go outside and talk to people and engage myself basically through physical self. So, yeah. What I understand from your answer is that it's more of a communication. It's yes. what is misunderstood rather than what it is you are trying to say. Exactly. We, uh, I don't uh, uh, try necessarily tend to express myself uh, on every occasion. I, I try to be quiet because that's my nature. Uh, but I do understand a lot of things. Yeah. You were seen as a typical teenager, rebellious, temperamental, competitive, ambitious. But overall, you've done well for yourself in life, haven't you? Thank you, sir. Thank you for saying that. And uh, I'm trying to be uh, uh, even more pumped up now than uh, was I with playing days. Now, even more uh, life has thrown me, as you said, different uh, angles to it to me. So I am a father now, blessing of three kids. So I need to handle them with care and myself being there. You know how I work, sir. So um, it's, it's, it's a good, uh, good space to be in, sir. You are a father, as you said just a few moments ago, but you are always a mama's boy, weren't you? 100% sir, always, always. I just love her and uh, I just feel connected from day one. I think. It's, a, it's a blessing. So going back to that, going back to that, you being a mama's boy, you had your differences with your father and what you did was to walk out on the how, on the family rather, and then go live uh, the way you thought you should lead a life. Did it make you tough? It did, sir. I think I, I actually promote a lot of youngsters nowadays um, to go out and uh, explore themselves without any company and just travel alone and uh, see what it is. Because nothing uh, is better than going outside with a full heart of free freeness inside you is 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 a want for everybody. I feel so. I think uh, being young is an advantage, and uh, I can understand now both sides of it. I got to balance a little bit, but I I do go up a backpack and go outside. Okay, now that you mentioned that you're encouraging youngsters to do that, your sons were to walk out on you in their mid-teens. How yeah, do you see that as a father? So it's a natural uh, process, sir. I think I'll be blessed to even see that happening. If it happens, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been surprised if you are not to you know, agree with that viewpoint or say something different. Controversy has always had a habit of chasing you. But uh, overall, you dealt it well. It's also teased you as well. You were dropped earlier days, you know, when you were the age group tournaments. You were dropped for having a ponytail. What is that story about? I still have one, sir. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, 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 I look back and I, 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 
I try to reconnect with myself because I, as I told you, I be, I'm a very quiet person. I like to be in a very you know, private kind of life I'm leading at the moment. But um, when I look back, I've lost a lot of memories. But when I'm talking to it, it's flowing back to me. I've been judged overall sir, as a person walking as well. If I, if I walk and I know for people have commented on me. So I've gone through that and I found balance. I feel very long. Um, having a great time looking up to you all. I had a great uh, mentorship with you around as my first coach in Ranji Trophy. And I've always looked up to you as a cricketer and a uh, huge star when I was growing up. And I had the privilege to meet so many personalities in, my, in our uh, cricketing world. That has taught me a lot of things to balance myself and be humble, basically. Try to do your things with uh, full heart. These are things I practice and I go by. How difficult was it to fight the inner demons or the rebel inside you and also the external factors that went against you in your formative years as a cricketer? I wasn't too much aware of all of it from an outside factor point of view, but I was definitely thinking heavy inside my head to don't know, raise the bar because I for sure knew that I wasn't uh, good enough in, uh, uh, in certain aspects of my game. So I need to work on my fitness. I need to work on my uh, you know, skill sets. So I was more focused on those aspects and that was my goal sir, to improve as a cricketer and be 100%. I should be satisfied with myself. And I think I did for myself quite well. Yeah, you had your setbacks, you had your share of controversies, even as a youngster wanting to make a mark. But you also had your slices of luck. In fact, your start to international cricket had a bit of luck playing a part in your life. Gautam Gambhir was uh, got banned, injured, yeah. yeah. And then you got into the side. Was it banned or was he in the case of injury? I, I, think, I think it was banned. Sir. Yes, you're right. He uh, was banned and uh, I, got, I got this opportunity in Nagpur. And from there, before that, I was playing a Ranji Trophy game with you around, sir. So, yeah, it was life is... So, to be honest, it's a very, very emotional moment for me to sit and talk to you. And it's, I'm just enjoying myself at the moment, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. You were, yeah. you were, you were in Nasik, I remember. We were all yes. in Nasik. When yeah, we yeah. yeah. That we had to report to Nightport. What was the drive going to the closest airport from Nasik? Yeah. Just, just, just walk us through the thought process that went to your mind. So... I vaguely remember I had a flip phone and uh, I, I, I've never experienced those many calls in my life. So I got calls left, right and center the next 40 minutes and I was trying to pick few and uh, media got my number and suddenly the life shifted from uh, normalcy to some, for my standard, abnormal life. Like, you know, because it's too much of attention and these things kind of, I don't understand even now, but... Uh, I went through it in a happy way and the team received me with both hands and they showed me some, uh, you know, I felt like going back to home when I met Sachin Tendulkar, the first person I met, entered the Nag Nagpur ground. I remember it was, a, it was special occasions though, the absolute special and thank you being part of my journey and guiding me even now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome Vijay. Uh, the Thank thing you. is, you shaped well for somebody who's making his debut against probably the best attack then. And what does it take for a debutant to stand up to the best of bowlers on his debut? The, the previous night was a crucial uh, uh, thing to share, sir. Because the previous night, one day before my first test match, I, I, I was in the Zen mode, they call it. Right? I had Zen mode. I was in so calm and I could feel myself uh, a little more extra than what I generally used to. So I was in that mode to, you know, pumped up to go and perform. And I was in good, good form before that. I was scoring runs and I was doing my basics, right? So uh, instincts took over sir, in the first day. That, 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 that is the exact feel I had when I spoke to Virendra Seva and asked who is going to open and who is going to take strike. He said, uh, go for it. And I said, okay, I'll go for it. So that moment we connected as brothers and uh, I could see it in his eyes that, you know, he welcomed me with both arms. So I just, and the partnership happened. We had a 90 or 100 run partnership in the first innings of mine. That was more happy feeling for me, you know, contributing for the team. And from there, I, I think I improved uh, my yeah. um, skill sets. The start was uh, appreciated by everybody. You would have felt a lot of satisfaction. But at the same time, you also had to contend with the fact that you were going to be the third opener for a while. Mm -hmm. How is it that you handle things like this? I was, I'm... I remember I've spoken a lot of uh, times to you about handling the mindsets and how to go about a certain situation. And you have taught me a lot of lessons without even speaking much. You stole a few words and I've understood. And uh, 
it is it is to come back to now sir it is you got to come back to now and you got to fight it bite the bullet and uh, better um, there are going to be hard times for everybody but uh, you see the better picture of life and uh, try to you know contribute again as i told uh, in the dressing room i just wanted to be the best wealth man possible for my team at that moment i was thinking whatever ability i had i just kept it aside and now i got to help the teammates and i've learned a lessons through you all how to be humble and uh, just went through it so i never had a uh, anything uh harsh or anything beautiful for me when i was sitting out i took it as a challenge and i worked double the order and i made friends and i voluntarily went and spoke to people and because i couldn't speak hindi and i can i'm even now i'm struggling but uh, it was a, it, you can feel it sir how would be in the indian team without uh, you know understanding hindi <laughs> so it was a, it was a, it was a <laughs> fun ride the century at trent bridge obviously is something very special to you and after that um you went on to make a lot of runs abroad would you call that 100 as the turning point uh i definitely felt uh, when i scored my 100 in hyderabad uh, for my comeback uh, i think 2012 if i'm not uh, exactly i don't know the year but uh, around that time when virendra sevang myself were opening i had this hint came to me saying this might be your last test series and i felt hyderabad innings was something pure out of above sir i never thought i would be having those so much patience and play there and that knock actually gave me faith and belief that i can perform anywhere because the situation in my personal life and cricket it it hit me together so after that i never looked back i thought completely i had the confidence to go and perform anywhere in the world so trent bridge was one of the best knocks i've played yes patience you didn't lack at all because i remember you got a 83 not out uh, batting the whole day against andhra and yes, then yes. people had a few words to say you also were in doubt whether that is the right way to approach or not so what i'm trying to get at is you're talking about your patience surprising you i never felt that you lack patience <laughs> thank you sir thank you i'm working on it <laughs> like what does it that helped you get as many runs as you did in alien conditions so i was uh, as i as i told you i came from good roots so i understood cricket from early age and i understood batting so it was firstly for me easy for me to understand what the team requires from me and for me to go and adjust to that situation and adapt was much easier for me because i understand the basics of what i got to do and how i got to deliver so when i went abroad i was much more open minded and i had i had a inner feeling whenever i was outside of my country i had something was telling me that i'm in a happy space i'm going to do something great i'm going to do something special the moment it happens to me in india as well but whenever i stepped out to england or australia the first time it was it was a feeling of a kind so it was something different and uh, yeah that uh, positive energy and uh, momentum took care of the whole series i had a great start in uh, all the series if you see I had uh, started well and the team's contribution was nice and team atmosphere was great so everything gelled for my performance it was in uh, my own uh, this thing it was ms dhoni's captaincy he encouraged me a lot he was uh, giving me that uh, freedom to express myself so yeah it was a overall team effort in terms of technique you trusted the bounce a lot that also must have helped you when you played abroad rather than the low bounce pitches in india 100% so um, more bounce here it's easier for my kind of batting and uh, definitely uh, england was the toughest spot i have played cricket as you know it is difficult both you cannot as a batsman say you're confident throughout the over leave the sessions and leave the uh, end of uh, all uh, day it's uh, every over is an event and every ball is an event so it is an amazing place to be scoring runs the firm pitch at cci prabhon stadium you would have enjoyed batting on that you got a good uh-huh. knock as well there against sri lanka if i remember yes, so i i'm i'm i completely feel the knock because virendra seva got a 293 i feel and on that test match and being uh, there for 200 run partnership we had and virupa was going all guns and it's a hot seat to be there and watch him play and i enjoyed my batting with you were playing with virendra sehwag it becomes easier sir the batting Now becomes easier it does become easier but the only temptation you have to resist is to try and copy him <laughs> yes i and i did and i got out <laughs> <laughs> yeah talking of opening the batting it's a tough proposition isn't it in the last 2 yes. 3 years uh, opening partnerships haven't thrived goes to show how difficult opening can be it is it is and i feel it is a specialized uh, uh, job as a 
person because you got to understand yourself a little more and mentally you got to be a little more open minded to be an opener uh, you cannot have set plans or you cannot do uh, okay this is how i'm going to approach this innings you got to be having that open mindedness and go with a free spirited and uh, you know go and take the game head on um, so yeah it's a, it's a different uh, it works differently for different people sir, but for me it is my creating my space inside my head matter a lot more than uh, batting itself i need to be in a state of mind to go and perform so for that i did whatever made me happy and yeah you performed incredibly in red ball cricket white ball cricket also you showed glimpses you showed the ability but what went wrong or what didn't go right in white ball format uh, it's a good question sir i felt i was more of a white ball cricketer than a um, longer version cricketer if you would have seen my one day records in tamil nadu for tamil nadu was nice in the first year and i loved playing 50 overs and somehow i couldn't uh, get those hundreds i feel so i couldn't get the big knocks or uh, the impact i had the impact but i couldn't convert it into a big knock or a 70 or a 80 it was all 40s and 30s and maybe uh, i missed the bus you even had a century in the ipl version which means that you are capable of playing Mm-hmm. and another thing uh, that your cricketing career would emphasize is the fact that if you can succeed in the longer format you can adapt to the white ball as well but unfortunately it didn't happen as much as you would have liked it to 100% i still feel uh, uh, the good side of life and i, I move on because if i go and uh, reassess myself some so i honestly feel uh, as a person you can only do what is there in capacity of us then um, outside we can never control so i i strongly believe in it and whatever happened for me is happened for good so i am taking it that way than analyzing my white ball cricket because there is harsh reality is you got to accept that i didn't play from myself so i don't want to get into that mindset than <laughs> take wherever i played and be with it you seen a lot of openers bat you would obviously had a lot of conversations with them what does it take for openers to succeed i am asking you this question because it will be useful for the aspiring openers no usual nonsense of expressing yourself intent process i don't want those answers let's talk some real points here <laughs> 100% <laughs> so being a opener you got to be a daredevil so basically you got to have the mindset of a go getter and uh, and uh, definitely i feel skill sets matter you need to have um sharp eyes sharp uh, you know understanding of gauging the length faster and the swing so you should have this basics in you naturally as an opener hope i feel openers are not made you, um, you are there the right example you got to work over a period of time to become a better opener but openers should have basic brash approach you should go outside and uh, you know show the energy from the ball one with at the same time you got to be compact you got to be you know disciplined with your approach you got to be tight with so finding that balance as an opener is very important and uh, i think um, with playing matches everybody will feel the experience and improve their game at the end of the day as an opener you got to be konjam paithe mari irukanum sir you got a little you got a different mindset obviously. yes you got to be thinking little out of the box and now uh, little that side of you got to predict things you got to be at the same time not to predict and uh, be in that uh, reactive mode so it is a balance you got to find uh, the great gavaskar always says to play fast bowling you need courage to play spinners you need skills you had both is it easy for uh, a batter to have both i wanted to be that way oh, also sir in so uh, uh, con- or you got to work something uh, to gain all those things no consciously i didn't get the freedom of virendra seva to be honest like whatever virendra seva got in his life i did not get if i could have got those kind of backing and you know open spirited talks i would have also tried the honest thing is the teams backing and teams how you're going to contribute to the team in international level because the high level competition and you don't have many chances to you know experiment different ways you got to be consistent so you got to have everything as a package and how you're going to mold yourself as a person to whatever they demand the teams demand so when varendra seva was there even i felt as you said controlling my instincts and playing was hard but to see him go through that kind of freedom was something spectacular he only he could have done that sir. nobody else i feel could have played like varendra seva what he did for indian cricket is amazing of course he was totally different he was totally different, different. He, he he is something else which i've seen visually and had the privilege to interact with him and you know because it was so simple he also kept the uh, funda or the uh, mantra very simple 
uh, see the ball and hit. He was in that mode and he was singing songs for 145, 150k bowlers. So, it's something else. Though. You're experiencing something else. <laughs> it's not normal. <laughs> Talking of openers, now let's continue with that for a little bit. No, this Shikhar, is a passion, sir. This is a passion. Okay. Shikhar Dhawan and you have a very good friendship. How is it going? He's doing good. He's uh, captain India and I'm very proud of him for his growth in life. Uh, he's a great guy. More than anything, I res respect him for the personality he is and the person he is. There's always fun and banter when he's around. I wish him all luck and he's a great guy to be part of. So one day we'll call him home in Chennai and we'll go. Opening together made your friendship stronger or the friendship made it a good combination on the field? I, I honestly feel we are great friends and uh, we had the opportunity to play for India together. And uh, that's how we saw and that's how we see now. As uh, individuals, we know where we can go. But as cricketers, we respect each other and I, I and he's always there for me when required. He always puts his hand on my shoulder and, you know, be the lighter moment of my life. He comes and tells something which makes you light. And uh, he's a great guy and my brother from another mother. So. We are all like that, it, I feel. What do you make of the treatment meted out to him in recent times, in the one-day format? So, to be honest, I wanted to address with you also, sir. You would have gone through in your life. After 30 in India, I think it's a taboo. I think everybody are old and they see us as 80-year-olds walking in the street. So, <laughs> so I don't know, sir. I don't know. I don't want to get into this controversial thing. But this is how people's mentality is, how the media is addressing that way. They should change a little bit. Be a little, because I feel at the 30s, you are at the peak. And uh, now I, am, I feel sitting here, I can bat the way I can bat now. But unfortunately, or fortunately, the opportunities are less. And I got to, you know, search for my opportunities outside now. I'm that position of, you know, thanks to BCCI Prime, announcing it. I'm almost done with BCCI. And I want to find my ways abroad and play a little bit of competitive cricket. Now that you brought this up, how would you like Murli Vijay, the cricketer, to be remembered? So, quality player, sir. He was a quality player. That's it, sir. I don't want anything else more. I just wanted to, people to remember that this guy was a good quality cricketer. So, oh, simple. Outside Austin, leave it. So, that's how you answer it now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a very keen golfer of late. Is there any ambition in that sport? Are you got any seeds of ambition within you in golf? Definitely, uh, Raman sir. I feel golf has helped me as a person as well. As you know, to be honest, I've been searching for. So I want to ask you one more thing, sir. Okay, this is my personal understanding, and youngsters will might no will get your point of view, which is unique. How did you go through your transition as a cricketer, then your coach, then your commentary, and then you become a everything? You have covered every aspect of a man's life, like basically overall. I'm not talking about a cricketer, just as a human being and a man. And you carry yourself in an amazing way and blessings. So, how do you cope up with so many avatars happening inside you or characters going, you know, shift? Is, how is it easy or how, how do you do that it's with so much of ease? I never ever got into doing if I thought I cannot do justice to that role. So, unless I was very sure I can execute that role, I never got into that. Secondly, uh, life will always be full of ups and downs. You can't run the life that you want to all the time. So, always uh, only get surprised if people do what you think they have to do. Mm -hmm. If they don't do, don't even react to it because, you know, it's something that is a part of life. You should only be surprised if they do what they have to do. So, if you take that stance, I don't think nothing will face you. I don't think uh, you'll be faced by anything if you take that stance. Well said, 100% taken <laughs> from my side. Grasped. <laughs> if you were to look back in time or look back at what all has happened so far in your life. You are, of course, in your prime of your life. Cricket is one section of life. What would you like to do differently? So, uh, to be honest, I, as I told you, I'm proud and blessed to have picked the sport cricket. And uh, through cricket, I never thought I'll go and reach to a level where I reach. And uh, as a person, I, was, I have been the same constant, you know, very hungry to know what life is made of. I want to know I like adventure personally. I like to do things uh, which challenges me on a day-to-day -day basis. 
so and i am blessed with uh, my family who supports my uh, you know passion so i can't ask for more no complaints from my side as a person sir but there is definite scope of improvement from my own self so i'm in search of that and uh, and let's see sir i'll come back in some other form and uh, i'll i'll entertain people i i am very curious to see what that author is i am very very curious uh, vijay yeah. yes, now sir. now to the important aspect of life have you smoked the peace pipe with your father what's it these days with him no uh, i have i have understood him and i and i'm not, I, i cannot understand him but i have understood his uh, way of uh, you know carrying himself and he is a style icon for me in my eyes so to be honest i was having this ego clash when i was young and i didn't have i would i did not give enough time to them to understand because i was going through my own battles in my life and wanted to go and reach out to something where i can call myself vijay did this so i was in this self identity and i wanted to know who i am and still i want to know who i am so my dad is one who put up with me and guided me throughout seeing me from you know ups and downs he was always constantly you know balance me out he always by watching him i learned so many things than talking to him so that's the relationship i have with him and i bless him for more life and everybody for more life you proved a point to him he is happy you made something out of life and uh, you both sit together and have a drink of late 100% and he doesn't drink but he sits with me okay so you enjoy the conversations with him i i thoroughly enjoy the conversation now and i'm peace with it so as you said peace okay now just give us a hint of which avatar we are likely to see you in the future just a small hint so i honestly wanted to go and dance i mean that more to dance so i don't know if it is going to be entertainment let it be entertainment and i want to go and do it i am in that mode sir thanks a lot uh, vijay for the time and also for readily agreeing to be on the show it's been a pleasure talking to you i'm sure that uh, we will see more of you at least i know i'll see more of you on the golf course thank you sir yes as far as all your fans are concerned uh, i sincerely hope uh, you do provide the kind of entertainment that you're hoping to or planning to in the future as well all the best Take thank care. you sir thank you sir and i just want to say you are one of the unique personalities i met in my life and i wish you and bless you for a happy and healthy life sir love you thank you this, yeah thank you sir bye bye that was morley vijay a bit resistant a bit reserved yet wants to communicate a lot and that's what uh, morley vijay is all about uh, he has his own way of communicating and he also has a mind of his own which is what dictates what he does in life it cannot be uh, construed as a fault in any person's uh, character but uh, nonetheless what is important is that uh, he has uh, been as forthright as he can be and he's also given us a few important insights at least as far as the aspiring openers are concerned he's uh, told us what it takes to be a opener at the top level and also how to succeed at that uh, top level too Until I catch up with you next week take care and be safe